Well, today I want to continue on our uh, uh, sermon series that we're calling When Life Gives You Lemons. Anybody ever felt like life was handing you some lemons, some problems, some setbacks, some obstacles, some challenges? Uh, we probably all heard the saying that goes a little bit like this. When life gets, gives you, uh, when life gives you lemons, you make Lemonade, right? Okay. Are you, everybody awake this morning? Okay, just making sure. Come on. Uh, when life gives you lemons, you make lemonade. But sometimes, if I'm very honest with you, I just want to. I just want to turn that around and just say, when life gives you lemons, I just want to throw them back at somebody really, really hard. All right. Or sometimes I got a good amen back there for that. Sometimes I want to feel like when life gives me lemons, I just want to gift wrap them and give them to somebody else. Okay, when life gives me lemons, what I really want to do is take that lemon, open it up, and squirt somebody in the eyes with it, okay? But, but the problem is, lemons are what? They're trials. They're challenges. They're things that we all face from time to time. Difficulties, uh, disappointments, setbacks. And the thing about these kinds of things is they're inevitable, We can't outrun them. We can't outsmart them. We can't give them to people that we don't like, right? In fact, if you're not going through a trial now, it probably means that you just finished one or you're about to enter one. They're inevitable. They go, they, they, we all experience them. And uh, one of the scriptures that I want to share with you as we get started here is John 16, chapter 33. In uh, John chapter 33, uh, let me say it right, Uh, John 16 verse 33, it says, in this world you will have trouble. Wow, aren't you glad you came to church today? That's a promise from God right there. In this world you will have trouble. Why don't you take that one and put it on your fridge, okay? In this world you're going to have some trouble. Life is going to throw some lemons at you, but thank God that the verse doesn't stop there. Amen. It goes on to say, but take heart. Jesus said, what? I have overcome the world. I have overcome the world. I don't know about you, but I've been through some trials, some tests, some things in my own life. I mean, I know about dealing with depression. I know about dealing with anxiety, with grief, with financial stress, with job uncertainty, and, and so on and so forth. And many of you, you know what that's like as well to deal with those things. But there's always been a special scripture that during the most difficult times that I always kind of go back to, and that's the scripture I want to share with you today. It's always brought me much comfort and much peace when I think when I'm going through the most difficult times in my life. It's Psalm 23. So if you have your Bibles or you have, you're taking notes with me, go ahead and grab those. This, the scripture will be up on the screen as well. I want us to read Psalm 23. Uh, this is out of the NIV version. It says this, The Lord is my shepherd. Everybody say that with me. The Lord is my shepherd. I lack nothing. Verse 2, he makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the quiet waters. He refreshes my soul. He guides me along the right paths for his name's sake. Just pause right there just for a second. I want you to notice that in these first three verses, David refers to God in the third person. I've never noticed that until this week. I just want you to see this because it's powerful. He says, the Lord is my shepherd. He makes me lie down. He leads me. He restores my soul. He's talking about God. He's talking about his shepherd. Now, then in verse four and five. I want us to keep reading because David shifts. He changes his wording. He refers to God now in the second person. Okay. He begins not just talking about God, but here he begins talking to him. I want you to see this. In verse four, it says, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil. Why? For you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. I want you to think about that. Why does David transition? Why does he switch from talking about God to talking 
to God. And why specifically does this happen in verse 4 and verse 5? Why didn't he just go on to say, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, death, I will fear no evil for he is with me. His rod and his staff, they comfort me. Listen, I believe that this shift happens because it's where David is speaking of his valley. He's speaking of his crisis moments. He's speaking of the time where he's going through the most difficult, lowest situation. Life has thrown him some lemons. And in that crisis moment, guess what happens? And you've experienced it too. We, we, we're prone to talk, talk about God in the good times. When the grass is green and the water is peaceful, right? But we're prone more often to talk to God when things get hard. When things get rough and the lemons start coming after us. It's in those times something deep happens in our lives. It's in those times where God does very often the most profound work in our lives. It's true for us. It was true for David. Because you, you've probably experienced this too. We are much more prone to talk about God when the grass is green and the waters are quiet, right? But we're, much, we're able to talk to God much more uh, openly and honestly. And we have that intimate relationship born out of those most difficult times. In the light, we're prone to wander off like sheep in that green pasture. But in the dark, we stick close to his knee. We stick close to the shepherd. You see, David changes his comments about God to communion with God because during his valley time, he stayed ever so close to his shepherd, never taking his eyes off of him. He had experienced God in a way there that ushered him toward a special intimacy of really knowing who God is. And it was in that most difficult times in life, and it it is true for us, in the most difficult times in life, if we do not run away from God. How many of you know that when times get hard, we have a choice? We can run away from God, we can get mad at him, we can blame him for this or for that, or we can run to him. My friends, I want to encourage you, if life is giving you lemons today, I want to encourage you, run to your shepherd. Stay close to him, grab on to his leg, and don't let him go, because he'll never leave you, he'll never forsake you, and it's in those most difficult times that you will find that he does the most profound and life-changing work inside of you. And then... David closes the psalm by returning to the third person. Verse 6, he says, Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. If you're going through a difficult time right now, if you're facing some lemons in your life, I want you to remember a couple things today. Here's the first one. I want you to remember that God allows time in the valley. Jot that down if you're taking notes with me. God allows time in the valley. Again, aren't you glad you came to church today to hear the good news, right? But in the first, in the first few verses of Psalm 23, David paints this beautiful, gentle picture of green grass and quiet waters there. And then we get to verse 4, and it doesn't seem to fit. Because there he talks about this valley, this shadow of death, and it makes us think about a dangerous place where where sheep's lives are actually in danger unless the shepherd is there, unless the shepherd is alert and attentive to what's going on around him. But, But why, here's what I want us to think about, but why would a sheep be going through such a place? It's because the sheep, is, the, the sheep is going through the valley, listen, because the shepherd led him there. Okay, I want you to think about this for just a moment because there's a connection between verse 3 in this psalm and verse 4. Remember, verse 3 says, he guides me along the right paths 
or paths of righteousness for his name's sake. And he says, even though I walk through the darkest valley. You see, the path through the valley is also one of the ways, one of the right paths of God. One of the paths of righteousness. You see, the path through the valley is also one of the right paths in which God leads us. So if God's leading you through, through a valley, remember, it's through the valley. It's not to camp out and stay there, right? Don't get stuck there because he wants to lead you through. And as he leads you through, he wants you to teach you to trust him, to trust in his presence, to trust in his protection, to trust in his provision upon your life. So if you're going through that valley, remember, God allows time in the valley, Because he's teaching us something. And why else? Is because he's always leading us to something better. He's always leading us to something better. Philip Keller is an Austrian Australian shepherd uh, who wrote a little book called A Shepherd's Look at Psalm 23. And he includes this observation about valleys. And I put this on the screen because I want you to think about it for a moment with me. It said, the shepherd knows from past experiences that predators like coyotes, bears, wolves, and cougars can take cover in these broken cliffs and from their vantage point prey on his flock. He knows these valleys can be subject to sudden storms and flash floods that sends walls of water rampaging rampaging down the slopes. There could be rock slides or mud or a dozen other natural disasters that would destroy or injure his sheep. But in spite of such hazards, he also knows that this, listen, this is still the best way to take his flock to the high country. How many of you know that God's always taking us to something better? He's always taking us to that high country. He says, the shepherd spares himself no pains or trouble or time to keep an eye out for any danger that might develop. You see, I want to encourage you here today that when you're walking through an unfamiliar valley, a place that may seem unknown to you, and a place that may feel a little scary or dangerous, when you, when you have a sickness or a disease going on in your body and you're not sure how to handle it, when your finances are a little bit tight and you're thinking about taking up a second or third job to try to make ends meet, when you're attacked spiritually or by other people, when you're overwhelmed by life or you feel like you've just been betrayed by someone close to you, when your relationships may be struggling and your marriage, may, you may feel completely dis- discouraged by it, when you feel like it's just one thing after the next, when it rains, it pours kind of a thing, and life just keeps throwing lemon after lemon after lemon, we need to remember this. Our shepherd, your shepherd, has appointed even this hard time as one of his paths of righteousness, as one of his right paths. And he is leading you through this valley for reasons that may be beyond you right now. But rest assured, he is taking you to a better place. He is taking you higher. He is taking you deeper. He is taking you in a more intimate relationship with him where the sun is warm. And the grass is green. With God, every valley, listen to me, with God, every valley is a pathway to something better. It's a pathway to something better. And you may not be able to sense it now. You may not be able to see it right now or understand it right now. But if you stay close to your shepherd, he will lead you through. And you will see his goodness You will see his faithfulness. You will see his protection and his provision in your life. But just stay close to your shepherd. 
The second thing, the one thing I want to show you is Psalm 84, verse 11. It says, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. And look at this part. No good thing does he withhold from those whose, whose walk is blameless. Our God is good. He's a provider. He's our shepherd. And it says this in Romans 8, 28. If you're going through a difficult time right now and life's throwing lemons at you, you need to remember this verse. And we know that in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. You see, the valley may not feel good. and The valley may not always be good, but you can know that the shepherd is. And the shepherd knows the way through. Amen? Number two, I want you to write this down if you're taking notes with me. Remember that your shepherd has always got you covered. He's always got you covered. When life is throwing lemons, how do you, how do you fight fear when you don't know what's going to happen? How do you control your imagination when it keeps working overtime to try to create fear and dread in you? And you lose your confidence. How did David do it? Where did his confidence come from? How did he handle the lemons that life was giving him? David tells us in this psalm that his confidence came from three places. And I want you to write these down. First, David was confident of God's presence. He was confident that God was with him. In verse four, remember, it says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because you're with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. David was confident of God's presence. And we can be confident as well because when we step into that valley and it's so dark that you can't even see the path ahead sometimes. And, you, and you, you know the possibility that there are predators, there are enemies, there are attacks laying in wait for you. That your shepherd has something that he wants you to hear today. And it's this. I am with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6 says, God has said this, never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, the Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. Would you say that with me? The Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. And then he asked the question, what can mere mortals do to me? We have a tradition at our house, and we're, we're, we don't do it perfectly, but sometimes we, we uh, make a point to lay with our kids at bedtime. And especially when they were little, they would get scared of the dark, right? Things would creak, windows, things would tap. They'd be scared. They'd be like, Daddy, is there, a, is there a monster under my bed or in the closet or, or what's going on? And, and uh, I remember sometimes we would have conversations in that, in that dark room as I'm putting them to bed, and I would ask them a question like, would you rather I leave the light on and go to bed and leave the room, or would you want me to turn the light out and stay with you for a while? They always chose presence in the darkness over absence with the light. I want you to think about that, but isn't that what we need most in our valleys, in our most difficult times, the assurance that someone is there and that he's watching and he knows and he cares? I don't know about you, but I would rather have God's presence in the darkness than his absence in the light. There's no valley, no matter how dark that you will ever go through alone. You will never walk alone. Your shepherd will never, ever leave you. Another reason for David's uh, confidence is that David saw God's power. David saw God's power. You think about this shepherd, and it says this in the psalm, that he had a, he had a rod and he had a staff, but that rod was, was like a two-foot club made of oak. 
with a rounded head that was whittled from the knot of a tree and had sharp bits of metal pounded into it. So it was a club, and it was used for defending against attacks. And that rod, it's a picture of the shepherd's power. It's a picture of the shepherd's protection and fierceness to fight and protect his sheep. And he wields that against the enemies. And David said, I will have no fear when I walk through that valley, when adversity comes, when trials come my way, when, when setbacks and lemons are thrown at me all the day long, I won't be afraid because I feel the comfort of God's power. I know he's with me and I know he is powerful and I will not fear. It says this in 1 John chapter 4, verse 4. It says, greater is he that is in you than he who is in this world. Amen. And who is it that lives in you? It is the precious person of the Holy Spirit. It is the spirit of Jesus. It is the spirit of your shepherd. And he is with you. He will never leave you or forsake you. The third thing David, uh, that helped David to know his confidence was in God was this. David experienced God's leading. He experienced God's leading. He said, your staff, my shepherd's staff comforts me. He was referring to that shepherd's crook. It's a long stick with a hook on the end of it. And a good shepherd would use it to guide his sheep so they wouldn't run astray. A gentle tap on the side of a sheep would move them back into the fold. And a crook he could use to gather a sheep from a place that it, it may have fallen or slipped down. And David felt comforted that his, his shepherd was guarding his steps. My friend, the Bible says we can make our plans and we can do our thing, but the Lord orders our steps. You can know that your shepherd is guiding you. He's leading you. He's making you stay on that path of righteousness. So all of those things, David believed that the valley times were appointed for his good. He learned, that about, he learned things about God that he could learn no other way. He stayed close to God. He trusted God's heart. He knew God's power and protection and guidance all the way. And all because David could say these words, the Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my shepherd. It's not that the Lord is a shepherd. The Lord is Is somebody else's shepherd. But the Lord is my shepherd. He knows me. He knows you. He sees exactly what you're going through today. And my friends, you can have confidence in God that he will take care of you and that he will lead you through this valley and you can depend upon his power. You can trust that he is good, and the valley may not feel good, but your shepherd is always good. Amen? <clears throat> so what do you do when life gives you lemons? Write these down if you're taking notes with me. Number one, remember that to know God is with you. Know he's with you. He will never leave you, never forsake you. And my encouragement to you is if you're facing a difficult time, don't run from God, run to him. Stick close to your shepherd. Number two is this. Rely on God's power. Rely on his power. Depend upon it. Because our Christian faith doesn't rest on what is seen or what is temporary. Our faith relies on the all-sufficiency of Christ and the amazing power of God. There's nothing too hard for him, and you can trust in his power to protect you to guide you, and to lead you through the valley that you may be in. Number three is this, trust in God's leading. 
God is at work. My friends, he's at work. Even if you can't see him, even if you don't sense him, even if you, there's no understanding of it whatsoever, he's at work. He's always at work. And what's he doing? He's guiding you. He's teaching you. He's taking you to a better place. He's taking you deeper in your relationship with him. And he wants to teach you what's revealed in this book right here. Trust in God's leading. Some of you may be feeling God's leading to do something, to say something, to get involved in some way, to be, become a, a giver or a servant or, or to talk to your neighbor or to make whatever your next step may be. Some of you may just need to get saved and baptized and, and become a part of a church. I don't know where you're at, but God is always leading us to something better. And he may be speaking to you about this or about that. Maybe you need to go to somebody and encourage them in the Lord. Maybe you need to get connected connected to a life group or sign up for the, for the growth track. I don't know, but God is leading you to do something. And are you paying attention to your shepherd? Are you listening for the voice of your shepherd? Trust that he knows the way through the valley, even when you don't see the way yourself. Believe that he has good reasons for taking you this route. Even if you can't see it or understand it, he has good reasons, even though it may feel hard or unfamiliar to you. And hold on to the truth that there is something better. There is a high country that your shepherd is leading you to. And he's leading you to it as you go through the valley of the shadow of death. Let me invite the worship team back up. We're going to receive communion today. There's a verse of scripture that I want to share with you as our ushers are preparing to serve you. And it's the words of Jesus. It's the words of Jesus Christ himself in John chapter 10, verse 14 and 15. I want you to hear these words and see them with fresh eyes maybe this morning. It says this, Jesus said these words, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father and I lay down my life for the sheep. What a beautiful promise. What a beautiful thing that Jesus says, I'm your good shepherd. I'm going to take care of you in the good times, in the bad times. In fact, I love you so much, I'm going to lay down my life for you. I'm going to lay it down. I'm going to give my life for you on the cross so that you can be reconciled with God, so that you can have a relationship with your heavenly Father through Jesus Christ. Have you trusted him today to be your personal Lord and Savior. If you haven't, I want to give you a chance right now. I want to lead you in a prayer. And then we're going to take communion together. But if that's you here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, or maybe, maybe you backslid, you've been away for a while, but today you're coming back to Him. I want to invite you to pray this prayer after me. Say it. Heavenly Father. Come on, say it like you mean it, church. Heavenly Father, I repent for being master of my own life and living separate from you. I turn away from my sin and I turn towards you. I confess with my mouth that Jesus is Lord and I believe in my heart that you raised him from the dead. I receive you, Jesus, as my Lord and my Savior. And I welcome you, Holy Spirit, into my life to rescue me, to empower me, 
and to restore me to intimacy with my heavenly Father who is my shepherd forever. It's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen.